everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's been a minute since I did a video about bargain shopping for photographers. So today, get ready because I'm going to give you my very best for this holiday season. Let's go. So, like most photographers, I always have a wish list. A list of things that I really want, probably don't need, for my camera setup. So this year was like every other year. I had a list of lenses in mind, a list of cameras in mind, a list of films in mind that I really wanted to try out. These types of things can add up pretty quickly though. So it's not like you can just go out and buy them all at once. And if you've got it like that, you probably don't need to be on my channel. A lot of my content is for the people who really can't afford it, but really want to be on. So that's who I make it for, the people who are looking for a deal. So what I do during the holiday season is I have my list of things in mind, for example, I knew I wanted to get some 35mm lenses for my two camera setups. Digitally, I shoot my Nikon D200. Great thing about Nikons is all Nikon lenses typically fit most Nikon bodies from the beginning of time. So you can get a really, really old Nikon E-Series lens and put it on your really new D850 if you wanted to and it would still work. The glass is still nice. So I was looking for an E-Series Nikon 35mm lens. And I was looking for a 35mm lens to go with my OM system as well. I wanted to get a little bit wider in the shots I was taking. A lot of times when I'm on set, I do BTS work. Uh, I want to be a little bit wider and I want my aperture to still go a little bit lower. So I wanted to make sure I copped a 35mm to kind of accommodate what I was looking to capture in my photos. Same thing applied to my street photography. I wanted to get a little bit wider but like not too wide. I got really comfortable shooting the 50mm and perhaps, you know, as with most things, people always debate, is a 50 millimeter more like a telephoto lens when doing street photography? Everyone's got an opinion on everything. Some people are like, oh, you should only shoot wide for street photography, 35 mil or wider. Some people think a 50 millimeter is cheating for street photography. Eh, you know, eh. Henri Cartier-Bresson shot on the 50 millimeter his whole career for street photography. And I didn't hear anyone going up to him saying you're cheating, but whatever. I still want to challenge myself and try something new out because, you know, I'm always looking to challenge myself in my photography. As for me, it's my equivalent to golfing. Going out and shooting street photography is how I relax. So I really wanted to get a 35mm and that's exactly what I had my eye on heading into this holiday season. I also had seen a video talking about having two cameras when you go out on on adventures or you go out on jobs just to have a backup on you in case something weird happened with the main camera that you're shooting on having experienced this out on a shoot where my camera just kind of locked up on me i thought you know this might be a pretty good idea as i'm heading into the new year i've been shooting more and more film so i plan on doing a lot more traveling in the new year is what it really comes down to and i wanted to have a, a backup camera system just in case something went crazy and you know, in case something went wrong and one of my cameras stopped working. Now, as you may have noticed, I've been shooting the OM-1 a lot for the majority of my videos. Uh, I, said I got the OM-1 like in July, and ever since I got it in July, I have not taken my hands off of it. So that's probably going to be the case still heading into the new year. I really like the OM system. The camera's very small, not imposing. I got it in black, so it doesn't necessarily catch people's eye and throw them off guard and stop them from doing what they're naturally doing so I get better shots that way. So I wanted to make sure I stayed in the OM system. Um, I got the... Yeah. So I caught the OM-4. Um, I got this about two or three weeks ago. I got this camera. I bid for it. Well, I was in this bidding war for this other OM-4 that I saw on eBay. It had come down to the last 30 seconds and I was waiting it out, you know, I was waiting it out. But I don't know what happened. I, I jumped the gun a little bit. Somebody put a put a bid in and it freaked me out and then I put my bid in and then I got outbid in like the last five seconds. I was just really upset about that. I hate losing on eBay, you know, it feels so competitive to me. Like once I'm bidding on something, I'm locked in. You know, if I'm on my phone, it's like, don't talk to me. I'm bidding, I'm focused, right? So when I lost that bid, I was super pissed. But <laughs> I went back in, I was looking for more OM4s, and I saw this one pop up. And this one was on one of those buy it now. And it was for the it was for a dollar more than what I was bidding on the other one that I had just lost out on. So I was like, cool. 
So I got that one right away. I read everything and said it was in great sh working condition. And uh, yeah, I copped it right away. It was, it came down from San Francisco, so it didn't take that long to get here. Uh, I have already run two rolls of film through this camera so far. I shot a uh, Tri-X 400 and I shot my Arista EDU 100 on it and it came out really well. So the camera works, the meter works, the um, auto aperture priority mode works and the manual works. Everything looks really good. Um, you're probably wondering why the hell I bought the OM4 system when I've been working off of the OM1 system. And basically it just came down to, you know, I didn't want to have the exact same camera. I wanted to explore more, more of the OM systems. So I was like, oh, I'll go with the 4 because I know it has like spot metering. You can do like, I don't know, eight, six to eight different spots on it. I'll try that out. Why, why the hell not, right? And when I'm doing street, I can just put in aperture priority mode and have like one less thing to think about. The only real downside to this camera is that it is completely battery dependent. Uh, if the battery ever goes out, I can drop the lens feed down to 60 and I can still take shots, but you know, I just bought like a bunch of batteries, so I'm not too stressed about it. Honestly, I'm still gonna have my OM1. And then on my OM1, I suspect I will be shooting mostly portraiture. Either way, I, I feel comfortable with both cameras so far. So, and, and because it's the same system, I don't think it's gonna be like a drastic change switching between the two cameras. So I'm not too concerned when it comes to that. And I'm looking forward to having a backup camera on me, honestly. All right, let's jump into these lenses. Um, so for a couple months, I had been looking into the 35 millimeter lenses. I knew months ago that I wanted to have one, both the Nikon and the Zucchio 35 millimeter. So I started looking up how much they were going for. Now the Zucchio 35 millimeter lens goes for around $250. That's like where that sweet spot is. It may fluctuate down to 200, but you're probably gonna drop about 200 to 250 on a 35 millimeter Zucchio lens that's in good condition. I knew I didn't want to spend $250 on a lens, not right now. I get it, $250 in the grand scheme of things on like how much lenses can cost is not a lot of money, but your not a lot of money is not the same as my not a lot of money. I may need it later on. You don't know my life. When I was looking at this lens, I checked back periodically to see if the prices were dropping on eBay. I would also check other websites. I was checking Amazon, KEH, Craigslist. I was looking at you know, different shops around around town, camera shops, their websites to see if they had the lens and if so, how much they were selling it for. So over over months and months of checking back, I noticed the price wasn't really dropping. And then one day, out of the blue, I remembered that I had bought I had bought something camera related off of Etsy. So I oh I bought my OM 35RC off Etsy for a discounted price as well. So that's what made me go check Etsy. So I checked into Etsy to see how much they had this lens for. And I was I was surprised to find that they had the lens that I had been looking for for $52. And so of course I'm like, 52 bucks, what's wrong with it, right? If on average it's going for between 200 to 250, why is this lens only $52? Granted, it was in the UK, not that I think that they're selling lenses at a discounted price in the UK, but it was overseas. and. And the guy who was a seller, this is what he did. He sold, he sells lenses, he sells cameras, so he knows how much things cost. So the lens has a slight imperfection. The imperfection is that it has a slight scratch on the on, on the lens, on the glass. So let me show you guys. Came in this nice box, and this nice is leather. Looking new, right? I know. So yeah, the lens came with a slight imperfection on the on the lens. Now in the guy's description, he clearly states that there's a scratch. He says that the scratch does not affect the images. It doesn't show up at all on your final results and that the lens is in perfect working condition. I was just going to jump in because I mean, how do I know that the images aren't showing up with this scratch on it? You know, I don't just, I don't take anybody at their word that I don't know, honestly, if I'm keeping things 100, especially not on the internet. So I wrote the, I wrote the seller. I said, can you explain to me why exactly? the scratch is not showing up on the images. And the guy was very nice, he wrote me back, he explained that in order for a scratch to show up on the image, the scratch has to be very deep in the, in the glass, and the most scratches that show up on images are the scratches that take place on the back of the lens. So if you see scratches on the back of a lens, it's definitely going to show up in your photos. And if you see scratches on the front of a lens, it's very likely that those scratch marks that are deep will show up on your images. 
I've only gotten to test this lens out like once. I've literally taken maybe two images with it before my roll ran out. So I'm going to be shooting this lens a lot coming up in the next few weeks. And I will give you guys a detailed review on how I like the lens. And I will show you the photos unedited so you can see whether or not any scratches show up from this lens. But uh, so far so good of the two images that I did take. I didn't see any imperfections caused by this lens at all. So I am hopeful. Next up, let's look at that uh, 35mm Nikon lens that I got. The Nikon lens I got is a 35mm Nikon E-Series lens. Now, I got this lens because my 50mm Nikon lens is also an E-Series lens. Uh, it's a manual lens. You have to do all your focusing yourself. And I'm okay with that. You have to change your aperture yourself. You can't just do it with like the push of a button or the, the swipe of a thumb on your camera body, you have to just do it yourself. And because these lenses are a bit older, they're also a bit cheaper. If you look up a 35 millimeter um, uh, Nikon lens G, G series, it's probably gonna cost you, I think these run from about 160 to around 250 if I'm not mistaken right now. Double check me, if I actually look it up before I post this video, I'll put it down below. But you're gonna spend $100 on this lens normally. And like I said, I'm always balling on a budget, especially for photography, since it's not my main cash cow, it's not my main job. I don't go all in like that just yet. I was looking for an E-series lens. Um, this lens was running for around 100 bucks in some places, but they were also running a bit lower if you happen to have been paying attention on eBay at the right time. Once I knew I wanted to get this lens as well, I started checking back periodically, maybe like once a day, just do like a quick search, a quick search to see how much um, the lens was going for. And then I saw this one was going for, well, the bidding for it had started at $50, so I had a watch on it. And then I noticed that as we got within 24 hours, only one person had placed a bid. That bid was for like $52. So it had gone up a whole $2. And um, I, the, the bid was ending, or the, um, the auction was ending on a Saturday. No, it was a Sunday. The auction was ending on a Sunday. I was out at the Grove doing test shoots on the OM4 to see to see that everything was working. And I was within the last 10, five minutes, I was waiting on some people to arrive so I could like hang out with them. And I remember watching it and I didn't want to jump the gun again like I had done with this OM4. So I was like on it heavy. Like people could have been walking through my body. I wouldn't know it. And I put the last bid in. I asked myself what was my max I was willing to spend on this lens. I think I said $75 or something like that. And I put the bid in with like five seconds left and I won. I was so excited. I got this lens for $65. And yeah, I think that was a great buy for me. Honestly, a $65 lens that's going to take good pictures. There's no imperfections with this lens. I've already tried it out a few times. It's gorgeous. I'm going to be test shooting this as well in the new year doing some portraits on it, probably take it out. Definitely I'll take it for my BTS stuff that I do for, for clients. And yeah, I'll give a thorough review of both of these lenses as soon as I have had enough time to really work with them. And I'll let you guys know how I find them. Now, finally. <clears throat> Lastly, the one thing I really wanted this holiday season was some film. Granted, I want film year round, but for the holidays, I like to request certain types of film, right? So I put in a request to my family and friends for some Portra 160. Thanks, Mom. Put in a request for some Portra 400. Thanks, Valencia. And I got this Ilford Pan F50, which I have been dying to try out. Thanks, Tiff. You're going to try out films and, you're, and you want more film for a holiday. I mean, you gotta utilize Christmas and your birthday, really. So, if you can, put a request into your friends and family. Give them links to the products that you want. Don't give them a lot of guessing room. You don't want them to get this wrong, because it can be expensive. But give them links to the stuff that you want. Let them know exactly what it is, and, you know, they may get it for you. Blessed up. Thank you, guys. It's important to know when you're going into the holiday buying season how much things trend for. A lot of times, as photographers, we have to buy our own stuff because they are expensive. The items we want are expensive, and we don't want to be asking people, you know, we don't want to be asking friends or family to spend hundreds of dollars on us. So have an idea of how much each item you want is going to cost, and then keep checking back periodically so that you have enough information going into a buy to know whether or not you're being ripped off, if you're paying on par, or if you're actually getting a really good deal. 
if you stick to it and you are vigilant about these things, you can walk away with some really phenomenal um, purchases during this holiday season. So please try out my methods for getting a good deal for holiday shopping as I think now is a really good time. Um, I also want to give you one more tip. Now is a perfect time to hit up yard sales and garage sales. People are looking to make extra money going on this year because they've just spent a lot of money on new stuff. So they're going to be looking to get rid of all their old stuff, make a couple bucks to usher in their new stuff. So now is the time that you can go out and get their old cameras <laughs> or their old camera bags, camera straps, whatever tickles your pickle. Definitely keep your eye on Craigslist for yard sales and garage sales, even Facebook announces yard sales and garage sales. That's another way of finding uh, photography items that you might have your eye on. I hope you guys all do what you want this holiday season and let me know if you try any of my tips and tricks on how to purchase the items that you really want this holiday season. Alright you guys, if you like this video, please make sure you give it a like. If you feel like a friend could benefit from the dimes I dropped in this video, please share it with them. And as always, check back to this channel as I'll be uploading regularly all the way through 2019. Alright, peace!